Hi, my name is Barbara Hughes. I'm a certified nurse midwife from Denver, Colorado. I'm here today speaking on behalf of Hologic to talk with you about utilizing a standardized approach to fetal fibronectin testing. We have a couple of objectives today. One is to talk about the value of utilizing a standardized approach for assessment of preterm labor. And then we're also going to talk about specimen collection for fetal fibronectin to ensure that you have the proper technique, that you understand the benefits, and some situations where fetal fibronectin should not be used. We all know the March of Dimes and the very important work that they're doing to help us decrease the incidence of preterm birth in our country. Every year, the March of Dimes develops a report card for every state based on their preterm birth rate. You can see in this visual of our country that some states continue to have a significant challenge with managing their preterm birth rate. Um, and being able to step in and glean some of the great information from the March of Dimes with their preterm labor assessment toolkit, which I'll be sharing with you in a moment, um, can really help us focus on this important crisis and have more healthy babies who are born at term in our country. So when we talk about preterm labor, you have a patient that comes to your hospital or to your office with a complaint of contractions, and we're sometimes faced with a challenge. Is it really preterm labor or not? We know that 30% of preterm labors actually resolve on their own without any intervention or treatment. And in fact, of women who are hospitalized for preterm labor, 50% of those women give birth at term. Less than 10% of women with a clinical diagnosis of preterm labor actually give birth within seven days of their presentation. So it's really helpful for you to have tools to fine tune your diagnosis and make sure that you really do have a patient that you need to treat. ACOG is a very important resource for us and a brand new um, ACOG committee opinion uh, talked about the importance of using standardized approaches. Uh, protocols and checklists can reduce patient harm and improve standardization and communication. Communication across professions, communication with our patients. They also recommend that checklists and protocols are incorporated into systems, systems just like yours, to help practitioners provide the very best evidence-based care to patients. Now, to help support you in this, the March of Dimes has introduced a wonderful resource fondly referred to as the PLAT. It's the Preterm Labor Assessment Toolkit. It's a step-by-step -step guide to help you identify how you're doing in your organization and gives you a lot of tools, checklists, provider education information, patient education information uh, to really help you consistently manage patients that present with signs and symptoms of preterm labor. It's free to you, there's no charge, and it can easily be downloaded from the March of Dimes website. I would definitely encourage you to do that. So one of the tools that's recommended in the Preterm Labor Assessment Toolkit is fetal fibronectin. It's a very important tool. It's a biomarker for preterm delivery. We know when it's present in the cervicovaginal secretions uh, that a woman is more likely to give birth prematurely. So we'll be talking a little bit more about fetal fibronectin so that you understand um, how it can be of value to you and can obtain a specimen uh, for testing. So as a clinician, when we look at fetal fibronectin, one of the things you want to know is what do I do with the information? What do I do with the results? And I find that I rely a great deal on these results and focus largely on is there a negative test? If there's a negative test, it's reassuring to us that she's very unlikely to deliver her baby. So if the test is negative, 99.5% of women will not deliver within the next seven days, 99.2% within the next 14 days, and 84% at less than 37 weeks. So that gives you a lot of information and helps guide your management of this patient. 
you are less likely to need intervention and hopefully you can avoid hospitalizing her because you have this reassuring information. So it reassures you, reassures her. Now, if your fetal fibronectin test is positive, we know that a woman is at a greater risk for having a preterm baby. About 12% of women within seven days, 16% within 14 days, and 44%, almost half, at less than 37 weeks. No, it's not 100% but it gives you some great information so you can identify women that need intervention. It gives you that reminder, this is a patient that needs antenatal corticosteroids. And if you are in a hospital that does not have a newborn intensive care unit, it gives you the opportunity to transport mom while baby's still inside to a place where that baby can receive the appropriate level of neonatal care. So collecting the fetal fibronectin sample um, is very, there are some very important instructions for you to follow. Now, whether you are in an outpatient setting or an inpatient setting, uh, the collection process is exactly the same. So when the patient presents with preterm contractions, the first thing you're going to do is a sterile speculum exam to obtain the sample. You don't want to do a digital exam first. Um, because that's going to actually make your sample ineligible. During the speculum exam, you're going to rotate the swab across the posterior fornix for 10 seconds so that you can collect those cervical vaginal secretions. And here's a video for you just to illustrate what I've already mentioned. During speculum examination, lightly rotate the polyester tipped swab across the posterior fornix of the vagina for 10 seconds to absorb cervical vaginal secretions. Once you have completed the collection procedure, you just take that swab and put the tip into the buffer. Um, instructions are very clear on the package, but you're gonna break off the shaft at the score so it's at the top of the tube, and then you're gonna push it into the hole and you're gonna seal the tube with a click, making sure that there's not going to be any leakage. A few other really important reminders for you, um, and the instructions are written here in front of you, I just want to reinforce them. You want to collect your fetal fibronectin sample before you've done a digital cervical exam, even before you've collected any other cultures, and certainly before you do a vaginal probe ultrasound. It's important not to contaminate the swab or the specimen with soaps, lubricants, disinfectants, or creams. And there are some instances that you actually should not test a patient for fetal fibronectin presence. If she's had sexual intercourse within 24 hours before presenting, um, she's ineligible for fetal fibronectin. If she's having any bleeding, if her membranes are ruptured, if her cervix is dilated three centimeters or more, and if you know or suspect that she has a placenta previa, do not collect a fetal fibronectin. Preterm birth is a huge challenge. It continues to be a challenge for the patients that we serve, the impact on those families and our country, financially, emotionally, socially are huge. So our goal together is to help women have healthy full-term babies. And by utilizing a standard approach with the preterm labor assessment toolkit, you can provide the best evidence care possible, decrease harm to patients, decrease unnecessary interventions, and make sure you clearly identify which women do need intervention. Our goal together is to improve maternal and neonatal outcomes. So I wanna say thank you very much for your time today and have a good day.